Innal hamdalillah Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd nashhadu annahu qad ballagha ar-risala wa adda al-amana wa nasaha al-umma wa kashafa al-ghumma wa tarakahum ala mahajjatin bayda laylaha ka nahariha la yazihu anha illa halik Indeed, all praise and gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the heart that is God-fearing. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a heart that is fearing. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min qalbin la yakhsha'a. From a heart that doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us beneficial knowledge. And we seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min ilmin la yanfa' From knowledge that doesn't benefit. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our supplications, especially on this beautiful day, Yawmul Jumu'ah. And we seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he is angry and he doesn't la yustajab at dua he doesn't accept our praise. According to kufr and shirk, today is Good Friday, isn't it? Good Friday. Good Friday. But according to the Muslims, every Friday is good. Kullu yawmul jumu'ah Sahihun Jamilun. It's a beautiful day. Because we as Muslims, we don't have good Fridays and bad Fridays. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is every day he is taking care of, he is looking after our affairs. Every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ensuring that he is giving us the things that we deserve. Now it is upon us to do the things that's becoming of us to do. So every single Friday is a good Friday. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him and they did not crucify him. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him nor was he crucified. So these are all shirky beliefs. And believe you me, today is a Friday where people, Muslims are celebrating this day. Because the government has given them a day that's called Good Friday. <coughs> Every single day is good for the believers. Ajaban li amril mu'min. How amazing is the affairs of the believers. Whenever he is faced with calamities, he prays Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has patience, sabr. And whenever he is given the good bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shakar. He gives praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have come out here today, bi'idhnillahi azza wa jal, because of Allah's commandment. إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَسَعُوا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ When you call for the Jumu'ah prayer, not only because today is a bank holiday, ya Habibi. Not because today is only a bank holiday, you're going to be here for Jumu'ah. Every single Jumu'ah we have to be here. Because this is the Amr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create mankind except on jinns, except that they should worship me. So our entire lives is worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Our intention to, is to look at the hadith. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. So the title of today's khutbah 
is taqwa Allah azza wa jal. Taqwa Allah, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An Abi Dhar Junub ibn Junada wa Abi Abdul Rahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhuma an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal ittaqillahi haythu ma kunt wa atbi al hasanata wa atbi al sayyata al hasanata tamhuha wa khaliq al nas bi khuluq hasan rawahu at tirmidhi wa qala hadith hasan wa fi ba'd al nusakh hadith sahih this hadith is found in number 18 of Imam al nawis book and this hadith is reported by Imam at tirmidhi and he says this hadith is hasanun it is good so you have many hadith sahih authentic you have good hadith and you have da'if hadith you have weak hadith you have hadith that's forged fabricated and you find the people of innovations they love in the weak hadith because every time they want to do something that is bid'ah ah, and something that is corrupt into the religion and something that's not becoming of Muslims to do, they follow any hadith. And this is not the way of the believers, ayyuhan nas. The way of the believers is that we follow the hadith on sahih, only the authentic hadith we follow. Alhamdulillah, we have now come to know, know that the hadith is reported by a Tirmidhi and his hadith on Hassan. And some scholars say that this hadith is Hassan on sahih. So here is even of a higher degree. Who is Mu'adh ibn Jabal? And who is Abu Dhar? Abu Dhar, it is said that he was, he was to be number five who entered Islam. Number five. Wallahi, we take everything for granted. We take every single thing for granted today. Everything. You being a Muslim, you take this for granted as well. You just go with the flow. Yes, let's roll it on, man. You just roll. If the crowd goes to the east, you go to the east. When the crowd comes to the west, you come to the west. When the sisters hear something, hype them up, then they do something that's funny, that's unbecoming of them. People just don't know what they're doing. This is because we are too shallow. We don't know the companions. We do not know their history. Islam in the early stage, it took real men of courage. Men of understanding. Men who used to be thugs in Jahiliyyah. They have left that thug life. Because there's no good burying your girl cheering alive. It's not even good for you to slap someone. Imagine me coming out this member slapping this brother here. For no reason. What do you think he's going to do? 999. Imam slap me now. <laughs> Can you see that? We take so many things for granted. These companions, they were men who were in thug life, but they have left this Jahiliyyah. They have given up upon Jahiliyyah, smoking hashish, smoking weeds and marijuana, drinking alcohol. They used to flow the alcohol on the streets of Medina because you know why? They were men who wanted to meet Rabbul Alameen. They have inculcated something that is called Taqwa Allah. You don't buy these in Tesco's and Freshco's and Morrison's. You don't buy a pious heart from nowhere. You just don't go to the NHS and say, yo man, check this out, change my heart, give me a new one. You don't do this, bro. Huh? How do you do it? Sit down there and read the book of Allah. Read the, listen to the bayan. Come out to the Jumu'ah. Listen to the lectures. Find out who is upon what, who is giving some nice bayan. Stick to the masjid. How blessed is this place, subhanAllah. Best of places on the face of earth is the masjid of Allah. Worst of place on earth is the what? The markets, because it's lying and cheating and stealing and backbiting and men just fleecing on your wives. Bad place. This is the place you want to be. Abu Dhar they said he was number five who came to Islam. And then Abu Dhar, he was from among those, his brother Unais and many of his members of his family accepted Islam. He moved to Medina after the Hijra. However, he was not present in the Battle of Badr. And then he participated in many of the battles with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
and he was well respected for his knowledge and austerity. He lived for some time in Damascus. However, he moved to Al Madinah when Uthman was the Amir. And because Abu Dhar was such a pious individual, he is full of taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to criticize the rich people. Oh, why are you guys going behind the dunya so much? So he criticized the people to such an extent that Uthman, Uthman said, You, Abu Dhar, you're going to go out of Medina and live. So he, he exiled him on the outskirts of Al Medina and he lived there until he, was, he died in exile outside of Medina in the year 31. And then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud performed the janazah for him and led his funeral prayers and he narrated probably approximately 281 hadith. 281 hadith. Abu Dhar, number five to enter this religion. Number five, person number five who entered this religion was very strong upon the religion and he held that forum there. And this is why today we have Islam in our 1400 years after then. And then we have Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he was from among the Ansar of the Khazraj. He was known for his generosity and his gentleness. And then he was known for his modesty. He, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the most knowledgeable of people when it comes to halal wal haram is Abu, is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. The most knowledgeable, subhanAllah. He says, if you want to take the knowledge of halal wal haram, today people can't even decide which is halal and haram because the man says halal mortgage. Huh? You confused now? Then the man, he opens an insurance company and he names it Bismillah Insurance Company. And then my man comes on, on the Islam channel and my man is singing with a guitar. He's in halal music. What is wrong with the Muslims? Huh? What is wrong with the Muslims? Everything becomes halal. Everything becomes haram. If you come in the member, you shout too much. I have to go home and sleep and do my videos on Google because the man doesn't want hadith and ayat anymore. Oh man, this imam is too harsh. Where is he from? Oh yeah, he's from Medina. You don't want this, you don't want this guy? Can you see how confusing the people are today? No one knows which is halal or which is haram. My man, he smokes a spliff and he goes, Yeah, imam, these things give me a buzz in my head. Huh? What is wrong with the Muslims, subhanallah? Halal wal haram was Mu'ad ibn Jabal, the Prophet says, when you want to understand this religion, he's telling his companions, anhum, if you want to understand the halal wal haram, see Mu'ad ibn Jabal. In another narration, from, from among the people who memorized complete Quran, that entire kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala memorized from cover to cover, from among those who memorized this book of Allah was Mu'ad ibn Jabal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, take the Qur'an from Mu'adh ibn Jabal. How many Mu'adh do you have today in the masjid? Never mind, go take Qur'an from him. Hmm? So here we have a great companions, and he was, he was, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then sent him as a guide to Yemen in the famous hadith when he says, Min ahlil kitab. O Mu'ad, you're going to the people of Yemen. Mu'ad, let the first thing be shahada. Testify that Allah is one and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. فَإِنْهُمْ أَطَاعُوكَ بِذَلِكَ If they obey you in this, O Mu'ad, then tell them Allah has made five prayers for them. And then if they obey you in this, then tell them Mu'ad, that they should give from the zakah to min aghniyaihim wa to raddu ala fuqara'ihim take from the zakah and then from the rich and the wealthy and then give it to the poor and the needy wa iyyaka wa qara'ima amwalin nas be aware of the wealth of the people be aware be aware of the wealth of the people for between the one you oppress if you were to take the wealth of anyone and op out of oppression subhanallah then you will have to pay there is no hijab between you, that oppressed individual, and though, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people whose money are being taken away by their, their corrupt 
corrupting children, subhanAllah. Those Muslims who are losing their lands because of some jahil, infidel, some guy who wants to take his land. Those Muslims who are losing their families. They're not losing, subhanAllah. In our eyes, maybe they, they're losing. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as we hold fast to this religion, bi idnillahi azza wa jal, then they will not be losers. Even if they take your land, subhanAllah. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ they, 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 weren't, they weren't killed because, except that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Buruj. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُولِ We know the story. What the king, what did he do? What did this king do? The king, the boy, the sorcerer. Nice story. Check Surah Al-Buruj. He couldn't get rid of this guy because he was a Muslim. You, you can't get rid of Muslims. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us except to worship him. So then he tried to kill the boy subhanallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the whole nation to become Muslim. So he did massive wells and he put the Muslims in the wells. But they, they weren't losers. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? This is a great, great success, subhanAllah. So never are the Muslims losers. Never are the Muslims losers, ayyuhan nas. Here we have Mu'ad ibn Jabal was from among those who visit, who attended the Badr. And he also participated in many of the battles. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he died of pestilence, which is a disease in the stomach. And while traveling for the sake of jihad in greater Syria in the year 17 AH, at the age of 34, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he died and he narrated 157 hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اللَّهُ nafsa." He says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you about himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warns us about himself. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. وَنَفَعْنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَمٍ وَخَطِيئَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ إن الحمد لله نحمده حمدا كثيرا طيبا مبارك فيه كما يحب الله ويرضى الله سبحانه وتعالى the concept of تقوى أيها الناس it is something that is imperative this تقوى is something that is a foundation for this religion it is the word you can find it in the Quran you can find it in the Sunnah over and over and over so it is the foundation of the religion and the word, it, you can find it in many ahadith and ayat. Even when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would send an army out to any battlefield, he would, he would encourage the people to have fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala even warned the messengers before and he says to them, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he he says, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the, the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And we have advised the people of the scriptures before you, O Muslims, to have taqwa. So we have, re we have advised the people of the scriptures before us, the Rusul and the Anbiya in another hadith, in another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the Rusul. So he even commands the messengers to have this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says in the end of the ayah, وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ So you, O Muslims, have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي أُعِدَّتِ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah says, Fear the fire of hell, alati uiddatil kafirin. Fear the fire of hell, that which was prepared for those disbelievers. 
is sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fear the fire, ittaqun nar. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes he says, wattaqu yawm, fear the day. So he uses different days, fear the day, fear Allah, fear the nar, because he wants us to reflect. Wattaqu yawman la tadzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a. Fear the day when no soul, when no one will benefit from another. Your people will be there, but no one will benefit you. You and you alone. Then, wala yuqbal minha shafa'a. No shafa'a. No intercession will be taken from anyone. Wala yukhadu minha adlun. And then there's no compensation for what you have done. Wala yunsarun. Then you will have no helpers on that day. Some of the qualities of those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَبَنَى السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَى الزَّكَاةَ وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ it is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east and the west. But righteousness is the quality of one who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to believe in the last day. So if you believe in Allah, then you believe there's a last day. And then you believe in the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels everywhere. Ma min shibrin fi sama. There is no span in the sky. Illa wa fihi malakun, raki'un, aw qa'imun, aw sajidun. Except there is no span of space. There is no space except that span there. Except there is an angel standing in prayers. Or in ruku, or in sujood. And this is one of the beliefs of the Muslim. We believe in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, the prophets. And we believe to give to the poor and the needy, and to give to the wayfarer and those who ask, and to set the slaves free. And, we, and the ones who are pious are those who establish the prayers and give zakah, and fulfill the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَى Extreme, extreme poverty, their patience. وَالدَّرَّى And they're in their ailments, وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ Whenever they're in the battlefields. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْمُتَّقُونَ So these are the qualities of the people. If we have these qualities, fearing Allah and knowing that we will die one day, then we will be from among those who are the muttaqoon. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful in these are the believers who offer their prayers. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who are submissive in their prayers. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِدُونَ Those who stay away from false, dirty, evil speech. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Those who give this zakah. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِذُونَ Those who protect their private parts. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Except from their wives and those whom the right hands possess. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Those who, when you're given a trust, then you fulfill this trust. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ Those who establish their prayers five times a day. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ These are the people who are the inheritors of the Jannah, Jannatul Firdaus. Think of, there's so many lessons in this, subhanAllah. 
Think about Fajr, Dohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Think about each one of these prayers. Where are you at that time and what are you doing? Now, if you're in the masjid and you go home, then how come when you go home, you're stuck to the television, stuck with Bollywood and Hollywood, wasting your life? How come you're in the masjid in the front rows, and when you go home, you swear that your mom is slapping her, beating her, <coughs> ill-treating your wife and your children, oppressing them? You sit there to have some tea, and you're backbiting, you're slandering, you're telling lies. You're looking for another guy so you can rip him open. Uh, this, is this the way of the believers, subhanAllah? When this taqwa is missing from our hearts, this is when we end up in this crime. When we don't have khawf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will backbite, slander. When, you, when this, the khawf of Allah, the fear and the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removed from your heart, then you commit more crimes. Not only on YouTube and Facebook, and Twitter, you find many avenues. <coughs> every time, every place, you only oppress. And then you oppress and you cause the people who are under your care to be depressing, subhanAllah. You cause them depression. <coughs> Is this a good Muslim? Is this how a Muslim lives, subhanAllah? One day, subhanAllah, one day you will, you will just be there, you can't move. One day is going to come when you're going to phone 999, NHS, ambulance. You can't move. Your heart couldn't breathe anymore. They're going to stuck you in that HDU, high dependency unit. Lots of cables stuck to your chest. Parents crying, shouting. The same wife you used to ill-treat. The same mom you used to slap in her face. The same dad that you used to shout at. The same imam that you used to harass and ridicule the same people that you oppress they will be standing there screaming and shouting because now you're in the hdu can't move then the malakal mouth will be standing there you can't move you just seeing the nurses wobble eyes she just disappear in the distance needles stuck in your arms they're pulling out blood from you then you're gonna lie there you faint you get cold face, cold head. Then you're gonna lie there, no one you can move. Then you're gonna say, oh, ah, I wish I used to do something, subhanAllah. That's the time you're gonna say, I, I wish I never used to send those nasty texts and evil, wicked pictures. I wish I never used to play music in my car. You lie there like, a, like you're not waiting for Malakal mouth. I wish I never used to listen to these CDs. I wish I used to give the people the masjid when they shake that bucket. When they shake this bucket and they, they come around the rows. These guys are not beggars. These owner for this masjid doesn't need your money. You need it. We need it. Because we're going to go to our grave. And the things that we do good, that's what we will benefit from. Every single penny you stick in your hands and you throw it in that bucket, subhanAllah. That's what you're going to earn, Ayyuhan Nas. And this is the advice today. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and walk towards this. Like I said, you cannot buy this from Tesco and Freshco. You cannot turn on the Virgin Media and find this. You cannot find this on Sky News. This is news from the sky. So you have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot find good Islam and Virgin Media. You find this in a heart that is virgin. A heart that is God-fearing. I will die and I'm going to meet Allah. So I want to get it right as of today. Every money I waste, no, it goes to the masjid. This is what we want as Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Say amen loud. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our supplications. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us iman and faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do things that is great. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who are suffering from cancers. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good health. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to make this masjid wide as big as, as this city, subhanAllah. Amen. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help those Muslims who are suffering in those prisons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the faith to hold on to this religion and die as Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the words of wisdom so we can say something and get them out of prison. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people in Iraq. May Allah bless the people in Afghanistan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslim in Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslim in Syria. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims in every place. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا او اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار